Having arrived in London, decided to check out some things I hadn't seen before. Battersea Power Station has now been converted into shops and restaurants for quite an amazing uh, internal atmosphere. And of course, I timed it for Coronation Weekend and spent Saturday on the mall checking out His Majesty King Charles III Coronation. Spectacular pageantry. Coronation involved meeting new friends and getting on TV as coach passed by on the mall. One of the highlights was absolutely heading down the mall to see the royal family on the balcony as they waved to the crowds with the fly past with the red arrows to finalize the festivities. watch in London it has beautiful displays still set up for the coronation real display of national pride between the flags and the bunting and the creative shop displays just currently walking over to check out the army museum and some of the amazing artifacts I expect to find there arrived at the official British army museum checking out a section of their displays, including clothing from the Royal Regiment of Scotland. Turned used by Florence Nightingale, a famed nurse, uh, during Crimea. The museum has an interesting display of the medical and uh, injury side of the First World War. In the museum, many interesting artifacts, including this uniform of a 14-year-old, looks like a little boy's uniform compared to uh, the Grand Range uniform. It's like this young soldier here at 14. It's a fascinating story. John Fraser lost his leg in Gibraltar, and he kept these bones to be interned along with his body. And I guess something happened uh, that might make it to the grave from along with him. Unbelievable the size of a soldier in 1848. There's my hand, about the size of the width of the universe. This is the famed attire worn by Sir Lawrence of Arabia. You can see all the other uniforms from each uh, part of the globe in which uh, Britain is involved. Stained glove and handkerchief used during the amputation of the Earl of Oxbridge's leg during the Battle of Waterloo. Other macabre artifacts include the musket ball that killed Sir Thomas Picton at Waterloo, along with a number of other artifacts from the battle, including the bugle. So the first marquee of Wellington. The Duke of Wellington's cape and gloves and hat from the Battle of Waterloo. And of course, the beloved horse. In fact, it was a piece of Napoleon Bonaparte's hair. Nice souvenir of the battle. This is the bust of the defeated commander of the French. Yesterday's deluge of rain, We've got some sun happening as I walk along the Thames down near the Chelsea Pensioner Hospital in the Army Museum. Battersea Park is across the way. More images from down the Thames. I decided to check out more of Buckingham Palace area, including Horse Guards Parade and seeing the Guards Museum and the stables. First time I'd been in there. Um, some beautiful displays of the uniforms 
used in the coronation of clocks. Walking in a part of London I've never been in before. Spitalfields area. Heading to meet my friend Sandy from the Argonne's for a pint. Sales market. Looks like quite an uh, interesting thing happening here. Had a pint of Return of the King Lager, my friend Sandy, and we had a little walk through the beautifully lit downtown London nightscape until I took the subway back across town to Victoria to my hotel. This is the entrance to the Royal Air Force Museum with the Hawker Hurricane actually sitting on the spot of the taxiway which would lead up to the runway over here which is all being redeveloped as sports uh, facilities and housing. Arrived at uh, the Royal Air Force Museum at Hendon, used to be a site during the Battle of Britain. Scrambles, good fires, hurricanes to intercept uh, the Nazi planes coming in. I walk around to see. The Sea King helicopter, the Spitfire, to the older aircraft, sort of the Royal Air Force's history, all beautifully displayed. Hendon Aerodrome was used at the early onset of flight. So the Battle of Britain. Now this area has started up to be repurposed as housing all around. This can be witnessed by the condos behind the actual site. Row from the First World War, beautifully preserved. Location. The rest of the world war one fighting craft.
After visiting Hendon Air Force Museum, it was an opportunity to take a walk along the Thames, starting off at Big Ben and the palaces of Westminster. Having crossed the Thames, I took the Southern River Walk along the Thames, passing the London Eye and checking out the various shops and restaurants along the way. I'm last been out in London having a little look around the South Bank along the River Walk. And of course, I've come up on the Golden Hind, the famous uh, ship. I'll keep going until I get to Tower Bridge. When I got near the Tower Bridge, uh, Tower of London, and HMS Belfast, noticed that there was a cruise ship docked ready to depart. And it was the first time I've ever had the Tower Bridge open. Quite fascinating to watch the ship head out. Now that the ship was through and the bridge was back down, it was time to head to the George for fish and chips and a pint, a place where Shakespeare once drank very old, old pub. For my final morning, decided to check out MI6 building on the Thames, which is a Secret Service building. It was also used in the James Bond film as part of the plot line. And then a wander around the neighborhood of Victoria Station before heading off to Heathrow for my flight home after a great weekend. <laughs>